Well, it's kind of a darkish roast, sweet in the nose, flat, a little flat, not a lot going on aromatically. Some wood or cardboard, but not a lot. There's a basic sweetness, the usual sort of part caramel, part little hint of, of cocoa. You know, I get some sort of deep toned floral notes too, maybe like lily or something. Delicious. There's a kind of a staleness in the nose. Yeah, it's one of those coffees that I, the first thing that hits me is the roast. The first thing you get is the roast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get more, but. Well, it's a sweet, it's a nice darker roast. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's brought, it's brought out the caramel yeah. notes that uh, you should. It's not, uh, doesn't have a char much of a charred or burned quality at all. There's something flattening, there's something sitting on the coffee, and it could be that it's stale, or it could be the roast. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's been in the package too long, and it's not the roast. Because I get these uh, floral, you get you get some floor. Yeah, there's floral something notes trying to come trying through. To out yeah. from under the roast. <laughs> yeah, Ken, let me ask just to ask a question yeah. innocently. Is the is the is this something in the aging process of roasted coffee that the roast eventually takes over? Is that what's happening? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you had a fresh, uh, dark roast, there would be a lot more going on if it were fresh. There'd be just stuff happening and what? and I think I should know better I should be able to quote uh, studies but I can't uh, from experience the dark roasts do stale faster than medium roasts but again it depends how dark the roast is this is not a real dark roast this is not yeah. one of those dark roast dark no roasts no, no where, it's right it's not, the, a, uh, it's not a it's not a Pacific yeah. Northwest dark where the, there's oil and right. the beans right. are shiny or anything yeah, you're right about that but it's certainly in the nose. Now that I'm tasting it, you really get the dark roast bite. Yeah, this is the darkest so far. It's straight on uh, dark roast, not super end of the line sort of dark roast, but it's pretty dark. You get that sort of uh, bite, somewhat barbecue-y, uh, burned, not excessively so, but there and mixed in you get the chocolate possibilities. It's good mouthfeel. It's drying, but the, it has a viscosity, good viscosity. I'm still getting some floral notes in the, in the mouth, some uh, low-key, low-toned flowers. I'm not getting much fruit. I can't, if it is, it's dried fruit. Yeah, surprising, yes. Often in dark roast, you get a raisiny fruit. In the dark roast, I'm not sure. It's hard to even begin to guess at the, the origins of the, the coffee. Origin, yeah. It could have a little bit of African coffee in, along with the uh, Latin American, the Colombia, because there's some life to it once you kind of move past the the impact of the roast. The finish is pretty good. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. It has the roasty bite, but it's sweet. Not getting much of the chocolate that people like in dark roast. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's probably a pretty good dark roast that got stale. It could be, yeah. This is what I'm going to be interested in, the oxygen level. What is this? Uh, can we yeah, do a we little can. reveal here? Yeah, sure. Anyway, let me just... Laughing man. This is one of the only, this is the only coffee that I picked because personally I like the celebrity. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Oh, I see. And it says dark roast right on it. It's a Columbia coffee. And Oh, I uh, see, dark roast. So it's Columbia, yeah. So Huila is a, it should be in season now, so it should be a pretty good, I mean, the, the body, the, the mouthfeel is, uh, 
a mark of good Southern Columbia coffee, so mm -hmm. it, it has that, and uh, I guess it's stood up to the roast, but I still would guess that it's a little, a little too long off the roast, too long in the pa package. I'm trying to, to identify you, Jackman. He's uh, Hugh Jackman, he, uh, uh, Lacate and Leopold, Marvel Comics, oh, The Greatest Showman. I don't know if you've seen the, that musical. I I really love Hugh Jackman as an actor. So I. He's not. He, he wasn't in Les, Les Misérables, was he? You know, he the, might, he the, might the, have been. the film yeah. of the famous. Yeah, he uh, might play. well have been. Uh, he might well have been. I think he probably played the lead there. I, I think, yeah. I'll yeah be I'm a, kind of a film snob. I don't see popular films much, but I did see Les Miserables, and I really liked it, and I liked yeah. his performance. And uh, He's a great guy, and he seemed to have an, a, a real special interest in coffee. And then after I got the coffee, I was re looking more about him, doing a little more research on him, trying to find if there was any real solid connection between the celebs and coffee other than you know brand extension you know we, their people put them in touch with so and so and you know put it together but in his case he seemed like he was real into it there's a story about kind of an origin story about he and his wife deb who traveled to in ethiopia and then you know met this farmer and that's where the name laughing man came from the farmer when he met him he was such a positive guy and hughes i, I know a little bit more about hugh jackman than, than the other celebs uh, he's a you know, meditator, he's you know, kind of an interesting, you know, got a positive mental attitude, whole philosophy associated with him, and uh, very likable stuff overall. And and he met this guy, and you know, all of a sudden he got real interested in farming. He was already apparently a real coffee aficionado. All of it sounded great to me, and then I realized, what, then I look at my package and realized, oh, it's, it's a Colombian coffee, so it's obviously not from the original farm. Nothing wrong with that, but it's a different thing. And then I realized there's, a, there's, a, there's some writing on the back that says, it's copyright, Kara Green Mountain. Does the Laughing Man have other origins? Like, do they have an Ethiopia Yurgic? Well, at this or at this else? time, this is what was available. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know if they're oh, still making okay. the others. General note on celeb coffees because I, I tried to find a variety of celebrities, and I, well, for instance, I was interested in Martha Stewart. I was interested in other people, and I realized, as I was searching, that things change pretty rapidly. A Grace Hightower had a coffee. I was interested in that. You know, Robert De Niro Association and everything, and, and that's a celebrity coffee, but I can't, I couldn't find any for sale anywhere. So, so that's why there are no women uh, celebrities Yes, here. correct, because I, because the two that I would, would, that came up in all the lists, you know, obviously I, I started off with the list because the, as Pat said to me, well, Kevin, to be a celebrity coffee, you got to be someone known. So this should be the easiest project you've ever done, you know. So, yeah, so it should be easy to find. You should trip over them. Well, I did. These are the ones that, in effect, that seemed like they were interesting coffees, interesting celebrities, etc. Yeah, I, I found a lot of coffees that were well, coffees Martha a Stewart year ago. Martha didn't have a coffee? No, not at this time. I couldn't find it. You know, at this time, the coffees, the five coffees we have for sure, and I'm sure there are others as well, but some of the celebrities, I, I, ne I, I kind of, Neither I nor the other people that I contacted for uh, in uh, different generations, uh, different types of people I, I, that are at least known to me, didn't have didn't didn't have name recognition with them. So I'm like, well, that's not, and they weren't really on the cumulative lists. Well, so. I tell you, this is the darkest roast. So this is the darkest roast. Yeah. No doubt. So you kind of lighten up, you. Uh. <laughs> oh, I know they're all going to be watching this particular yeah, episode. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and by the way, we love all you guys. You know, <laughs> come and see us, <laughs> especially coffee right. show. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get the oxygen just to fill but out. I, I want to know. Uh, yeah. Inquiring so Jason, <laughs> what did you get on uh, on the Laughing, Laughing Man, Man coffee? Well, uh, Keurig Green Mountain, based in Canada, uh, did a good job, 0%. Um, however, the part of the bag that's supposed to list a Best Buy day 
in the little white spot uh, was oddly blank. <laughs> it was blank. Come, yeah, it was as is mine. Correctly yeah. mounted to leave right. their bags unmarked. Right. They're usually very consistent with that. Right. So that if you if you heard that you said Keurig it's Keurig yeah. Green Mountain yeah uh, and look at this. in Canada and doesn't <laughs> understand why there's no uh, uh, Best Buy or Nothing. any other information yeah. Nothing and uh, what was the oxygen Zero percent Zero Zero Zero's pretty good but that means there are other yeah. you know Well it shows that it was uh, packaged in a state of the art facility. My, my curiosity with the rose state is even if it's at zero percent, if it's over a year old, right? They just have a bunch of these sitting around the warehouse. It's, it'll still be stale. Yeah, yeah. Jason points out that that even at zero percent, if it's been sitting for a year in a warehouse, it'll be stale. It does taste old. Yeah, or it does. It did coffee. Yeah, because uh, you know, it, there's two possibilities. Uh, one is the roast is sitting on the coffee or it's just old, or both.